All right, welcome back to the channel, everybody. Jason Brown here. If you are new to the channel, thank you for stopping by. I hope you learned something. And if you are a continued viewer, I truly appreciate your support. Now, today we're talking about my family's recent trip to Legoland. That's right, we went to the Florida uh, theme park and resor resort, uh, which is located down in Winter Haven, Florida. Now, this is, uh, I'm, we're going to talk about this a little bit later. This, uh, souvenir cup here if you will we're going to talk about that in just a minute uh so legoland is is uh, located in winter haven florida which is in the heart of the central part of the state in polk county uh, florida it's on the old site of the cypress gardens theme park which uh, i guess went out of business uh several years ago and then legoland came in and took over the space and did a really good job of it uh, now, now Legoland, uh, Winter Haven is just a little bit south of Orlando, which is where all the amusement parks are, Disney World, of course, and Universal Studios. That's where all the, the, the tourist uh, places are. Uh, Winter Haven is located just a little bit south, maybe 20 to 30 minutes south of that, that Orlando amusement park area. So, so today I'm sharing seven tips on how you can save money and save time if you are planning a vacation this year to Legoland, Florida. So the first tip, we're gonna dive right into it. The first tip we did was we booked our trip 90 days out. So if you book your trip 90 days or more in advance, you are going to save 50% or potentially more. We saved 50% on the cost by booking uh, well in advance of our trip so that is a significant potential savings if you can do that uh, so and by the way i will link in the description below the website we used uh, to book the trip and and hopefully you'll you'll find some discounts or deals on there like we did and i will let you know i'm not affiliated in any way with this website i'm not getting a commission or a cut or a kickback i'm just sharing the site that we used in hopes that you can also save some money like we did now the second tip to save money is to be flexible on the dates. This is probably, uh, the first two here are gonna be the most important ways that you can save money. Uh, like I said, book in advance. The second one, be flexible with your dates. And what do I mean by that? What we did was we actually went just after Labor Day. So we went down there in mid to late September. It was about a week or two after Labor Day. So. So that is considered their off season or off peak season. Uh, usually vacation peak season is gonna run between Memorial Day and Labor Day. Anything that doesn't fall in that, in that time window is gonna be considered an off peak or off season for those amusement parks. Now, that's what we did. It was about a week or two after Labor Day. And because of that, the cost was significantly lower and also the crowds were significantly less. So it wasn't crowded. It wasn't, you know, a hundred degrees blazing hot in July, like it is in central Florida. And the other thing is, is that, uh, the, it allows you to have a much more enjoyable experience and, and time as you, you wait for the rides, the, the wait times are going to be lower, et cetera. So if you have the opportunity to book during the off peak season, that's when you want to try to do it uh, for sure. Now, uh, the next thing I'm going to share is food. So we saved a significant amount of money by not eating out every meal. We went to the grocery store. We, you know, we packed up our hotel room with snacks and food and stuff. And uh, some other notes I, I, my wife shared, you know, she sent me some info, some of her thoughts and feedback. Uh, because she doesn't want to be on camera. She's a little camera shy. So, so what she said was, as for food, this is usually where we tend to save big amounts of money by not eating out. Or when we do eat out, we choose less expensive options and utilize uh, gift cards and coupons. Legoland gives us free breakfast every day. So we did that, and then we brought snacks to the park. Legoland does allow uh, outside foods and drinks into the park. So that's, that's a big, significant thing you want to know. I know a lot of places don't do that. Uh, they want to force you to, to spend, you know, big money on their you know, concession stands. Uh, so Legoland will allow you to bring food and drink. So that's a huge advantage if you can bring those. Uh, so we also, you know, we, we went to uh, fast food restaurants if, if we ate out uh, Panera Bread, Chick-fil-A, places like that. And uh, the other thing I will say is that we did uh, stay at the resort, which I'm going to get to. That's my next tip. Uh, so tip number four we stayed at the Legoland Resort. They're, they have two resorts uh, right now, two 
hotel resorts, if you will, that you can stay in that, that are on site. So you literally walk out the door of the hotel and the park is right there. It's 50 feet away. It's super convenient. It, it's really the reason why we did that is because we saved so much money on booking. So we had the extra money in the budget to to stay at the resort. And the reason why we stayed at the resort is because we have two young kids, a five year old and a two year old, both boys. And it just is so much easier and so much more convenient if you have young kids. Uh, and everyone who has young kids is nodding their head yes, and they understand. Uh, how hard it is to wrangle kids. So, so that's what we stayed at the resort. And uh, as I mentioned a second ago, the resort provided free breakfast uh, each day. So that was a, a tremendous help, a, a convenience. And, you know, of course, that was all part of the cost. But the food was very good. Uh, it wasn't like a, you know a Holiday Inn, you know, a little uh, continental breakfast. It wasn't anything like that. It was actually a real sit-down restaurant-style breakfast. Very good food. Uh, so that was uh, part of that uh, deal as well, if you stay at the resort. So the next thing, uh, tip number five, this, is, this was such a cool experience for my son, uh, who was five at the time. And this was also part of staying at the resort, is they have free Lego builds that happen daily. So, so each day you can sign up to do a build where they have a Lego ambassador will sit there and basically have a class and he or she will uh, they have an overhead projector and they give you there's no instructions uh, they give you all the pieces and the only instructions are you watch the lego ambassador build it and he will he or she will tell you uh what they're doing and you watch it over the projector screen and you just do step by step and you kind of follow their lead and you build something. Usually it was a little uh, animal. I think one of them was a frog, maybe like an alligator. They had different, each day it was a different uh, item. It was a different thing to build. So we were there for three days and I think we ended up, uh, he ended up building three different things and, he, and you get to keep it. So you build it and you get to keep it. You get to take that home. It's a free souvenir. It's really, really cool. Very interactive experience. My son really loved it and I, I couldn't believe how good he was at it. Uh, he was much better than me. He was actually helping me out uh, with, you know, he was way ahead of me and, and he did such a great job. Um, so that that's something to consider. Now, the other thing that was really super cool, and I have a marketing and branding background, and, and Legoland did such a tremendous job of marketing and branding their product and their all their services and amenities. And one of the cool things that they did is as you walk throughout the park, you can... Uh, trade characters the lego characters you can you can trade them with staff members and they walk around and they have them you know pinned to their uniform or they'll have them you can go to the uh the gift shops and they'll have them displayed on the counter and you just trade one for one or two you know whatever you have it's just a one for one or two for two whatever you have you say hey i want that one will you trade it and you know they'll trade it with you so that was a really, really cool interactive experience uh, throughout the day. Uh, every, anytime he was seeing somebody that had a character, he would run them down and chase them down and, hey, can we trade? And, and that was just a really memorable thing uh, that they have as part of the park. Uh, so that's something cool to, to check out if you get to go. Now, I will say uh, the last tip, I don't know if this is really a tip or, or a trick, but but the last item that I will share is this was the biggest point of contention for me. This is the uh, Legoland souvenir uh, bottomless refillable drink cup. So what happened was my son saw everybody else walking around with one of these and he wanted his orange Fanta in a souvenir cup. So of course, uh, I cringed when I saw the price, which was $17.99 for one of these cups, which includes, it's, it's one day, you know, unlimited refills. You can go to any of the concession stands and fill it up with anything you wanted. That includes, that actually included the ICs. You could get the icy put into it, uh, any of the drinks that they had offered. Uh, so of course I said, no, that's too much money. I thought it was a little bit of a ripoff, but he melted down and caused quite a scene. It was a little embarrassing. And my wife 
explained to me that it was actually a pretty good deal if we got just one for the whole family and we shared it. So that's actually what I ended up doing. And actually, I think the, the, the staff member gave me a deal because they have these little, some sort of code or chip or something in here that they program. And each day, so you sit it on the machine to refill it, and it's programmed for one day. So you pay a one-day rate for it. But when I bought it, it was actually toward the end of the day. So it would have been a huge ripoff because I would have only been able to use it for maybe an hour or so. So she said, how long are you, are you staying here? And I said, oh, well, we bought a three-day pass. And she said, oh, well, I'll go ahead and program your chip for three days, and then you can use this for your entire stay here when you come back to the park. I said, oh, wow, that's great. Um, so I guess it ended up being a, a better deal for me just because they, they programmed it that way. But this was a, a very interesting you know, decision, I guess, to be made. So we, we went ahead and bought it. He's got the souvenir cup, and it sits on the shelf and collects dust now. So there's that. Woo! So anyway, uh, I will say Legoland, if you are considering going there, not only is it a theme park, but it's also a water park. So uh, you, you can do both. It's all the same place. Uh, it's, it's, so there's a lot of opportunities to have a lot of fun. Now, another thing, uh, I'll go back to one of my other tips uh, where I was talking about uh, – going during the off season and saving uh the crowds there's less crowds so we saw the wait times where most of the rides were like less than five minutes uh you know they put the signs up with how much time and i never saw anything really more than 10 minutes most of them were five minutes or less most of the rides that we did were there were no lines at all we i was astonished it, it, we we went on thursday friday and saturday were the three days that we went now thursday in the middle of the week that's another thing if you go in the middle of the week you it's going to be less crowds and, and maybe a little bit less expensive so thursday i'm not lying there were probably more staff members at the park than there were visitors i, cu I couldn't believe it i never seen anything like it and then, of course, you know, Friday, a few more people trickled in. Saturday, of course, there's a weekend day, so that's probably going to be your bigger crowd. Uh, but again, everything was manageable. The lines weren't long. Um, you know, we saw some signs that said 30-minute waits, but there, it was really like a 10-minute wait. So it was really, really a, a really cool experience. And a lot of the times we would ride the ride and then just get get off and just get right back into line because there was no line. You'd just get off the, the ride and just get right back on it. Uh, so that was a, a really unique experience that I had never had before because I'm used to waiting in hour-long lines for stuff like that. So that was a really cool opportunity. So if you can go in the middle of the week, that's the time to go as well. And one more bonus tip that I just remembered I want to share with you guys. You definitely want to pay attention to this one. It is very important. It can be very beneficial. It's the Legoland inclement weather policy. Now, this is this affected us and we screwed it up. And I'm going to tell you guys how we messed it up in just a second. So first, I want to read you guys the, this here, does I have it on my phone? I'm just going to read it off to you. I'll put it up on the screen. This is their official policy, which they have posted on their website. And it reads, the Legoland Florida Resort is open rain or shine. And while we can, while we can guarantee a memorable experience, we unfortunately can't control the weather yet. Due to Central Florida's climate, Afternoon showers and thunderstorms are possible, especially in the summer. If the weather affects our rides for more than 120 minutes during your visit, we promise to give our guests a ticket to return in the next 365 days, no questions asked. Please visit our guest services center at the front of the park on your way out to claim your return ticket. Please note this does not apply to annual pass holders or youth and educational groups. Tickets may be subject to blackout dates. So here's what's hap what happened to us and how we messed up. Uh, we should have got free, free vouchers. So our first day at the park, of course, it rained. The typical Florida is, Central Florida is very famous for their afternoon pop-up thunderstorms. So it actually rained um, intermittently, I guess I'll say. It wasn't like one constant thunderstorm for 120 minutes like the policy says. It was, it rained off and on. So we thought that it had to have rained for a consecutive amount of time, like it said, 120 minutes. 
And uh, so, so basically how they handled it is if they close the majority of their rides for over a certain amount of time, which I think they said 120 minutes in their policy, that's when you would get the voucher. Or in, in some cases, they actually have to close the entire park if there's lightning in the area. So that will happen too. Uh, so what happened with us, it was raining off and on and we didn't really think anything of it. We didn't think that was enough to warrant the, the policy to get the free voucher ticket. So. So we had actually uh, j just went back to the hotel, back to the resort, uh, and and we we were talking to a lot of people in the lobby, and they were talking about how they went and got they got their free voucher because of the rain, and she's oh okay, well we didn't know that, so we'll definitely get our voucher. Uh, but what we did was we went the next morning to the guest uh, services desk. And they said, sorry, you have to get it the same day, which of course it says that in the policy. We didn't know that. We didn't read the policy uh, beforehand. Uh, they said, you have to claim it the same day. So so the lesson learned is even if you're not sure, like we were, we were not sure if we qualified for the free voucher, still go to the guest services uh, desk or, or, or window booth and just ask them, say, hey, it's been raining today. Uh, do we qualify for the free the free ticket voucher uh, to come back? And that's a really good deal because they give you they give you a free ticket for and it can be used for a year. It's good for up to a year. Uh, so so you know I, I think they it's about a hundred dollars if you just paid for the admission to the park. So so that is something that you definitely want to look into if it rains on your trip on on the day that you're there. Be sure to ask if you qualify for the free voucher. So. That's about it for my for my tips. I hope these help you if you're planning on a tr trip to Legoland or really any other theme park. A lot of these tips can can apply for really any theme park. Uh, so I hope these tips help you. Uh, this is Jason Brown saying thanks so much for watching. If you would like to support me further, please cons uh, consider subscribing to my channel. I would truly appreciate that. And also, uh, I've written a couple money related books. If you want to check those out, I'll link them in the description below. And uh, of course, you can always check out all my blogs and videos on my website, which is yourmarginmatters.com. And until next time, this is Jason Brown saying to remember, it's not the amount of money you make, but the margin that matters the most. We'll see you next time.